Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. We're going to have a great day today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? In agreement and faith, say with me, Father, I make demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. We are talking about the knowledge of God. And I was sharing something with you yesterday about the, you know, we were taking it from what Jesus said, the John chapter 10. Yeah. John chapter 10. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And he says, I give to them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I'll share something with you yesterday. I know we stopped at some point. So I said, I'll continue today and I'm going to keep that word. So I'll share something with you that you don't compare yourself with others when it comes to um, the, these things. Okay. You don't say, oh, um, because one have bigger churches or bigger congregation or does um, mega crusades or has big structures, you don't say that person is bigger than you or that person is closer to God or is more anointed than you. No, when you begin to compare yourselves like that, then you're not wise according to the scriptures. It's, you're not wise. Why? Because I was telling you yesterday, because this thing is by grace. Now, because it's by grace, truly anyone can do it. Let no man deceive you to make you think it is the prayer he prayed that made that to happen. No, sir. No. There are people who have done mightier things that they didn't pray like you prayed. Now, of course, it's important to pray. It's important to desire those things. But here's the flip side of it. If you don't wait for it, because sometimes we can force things on ourselves. Oh, yes. Yes. And I'm going to show you a scripture that will help you. So now you, you, you start looking at yourself and you're thinking, ah, is it I don't pray? And then you're not going to prayer. You fast and pray and fast and pray and fast and pray. Nothing. You say, oh, well, something is wrong. You now hear the person say, oh, I went to a mountain. Say, I'm going to that mountain. You go to that mountain. You pray, you cry, you shout. The rain will beat you. Nothing. But you see, when I say nothing, I don't say nothing like nothing really happened. Because there's something you're desiring. You want to, you want to be like that person. You want to do what that person is doing. Now, what is driving you is not the Lord. What is driving you is another person. Okay. Now, you are trying to drive your vision like another person's vision but the most important thing the parallel line or oh no no the 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 thing that cuts across every one of us is one and what is that the voice of god and the knowledge of god the knowledge of god is given by the voice of god so if you don't hear the voice of god you cannot get the knowledge of god you see now he says my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Okay. So I know them, they follow me. And what do I give them through my voice? I give them eternal life. So you as the minister, you must be a follower of Jesus Christ. Don't be a follower of great works. Great works are important. I said, in every generation, God sees to it. Yes, God sees to it in every generation. He sees to it that great works is being done. There is nothing. Now, truly, truly speaking, if you've, if you've studied revivals in the past, and you'll see, you will notice a pattern. And the pattern of the revivals you've seen in the old times is the same pattern that you even see happening today. So you just realize that this thing is the doing of the Lord. That's what I studied yesterday. So you don't criticize it. You don't say, because when you study about revival, you will also see those who criticize those revivals, those who were not happy. And even amongst ministers, those who felt I'm doing great work, I don't think your own work is, 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 is genuine. There is nothing new. See? 
So when you become a chaser of those things, you might land yourself in trouble. Why? Let me show you what Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 7. This is what I want to show you yesterday. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Watch this now. Jesus speaking is written in red. Not everyone that saith to, unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Take note of these words. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, so not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom. What a thing to say. Now watch this now. And it says, but he who does the will of my father, which is in heaven, take note also. He didn't say, but he who does my will. There's a reason for that. He said, but he who does the will of who? My father, because the father is greater. The father is the greatest of all. Everyone, the son testifies of the father. The Holy Spirit testifies of the son, okay? And of the father, okay? So now, he says, everything flows to the father. The son is doing the work because the father spoke. Okay? The Holy Spirit is doing his work because the father spoke. So when Jesus was clear here, when he said, anyone but anyone who does the will of my father who said his word. Now, watch this now. Remember, he says, my sheep hears my voice and I know them and they follow me. Follow him to do what? To do the will of his father. Who is our father, okay? Now, watch this. Many, verse 22, many will say to me in that day, which day is he talking about? This is the end of things. Now, now he spoke a lot about this in Matthew 25, and 24, 25, okay? So, it says, many will speak to me, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? Did you see that? So they come before him. Now, these are not folks who are doing false miracles. Truly, these are not folks who are, who are false prophets. These are not the ones he's talking about. Because see, these people were bold enough to come to him and say, we did these things in your name. Now, if they were false, they would not do that. They wouldn't even come close to him. So this tells you in their hearts, they thought, they believed they were doing it in his name and for him. This is very, very important. Now watch this now. It says, Malu predication. I'll read that again. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many mighty works. 23. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that walk iniquity. Mm, mm. Mm. I never knew you. Now, he didn't say you departed from the truth. So he's not talking about those who, who even started well and then they departed. But well, of course, they fall into the, this category also. But then he says, I never. If he never knew them, how come they call him Lord? If he never knew them, how come they were saying before him that in his name they did many mighty works. Now, what am I driving at? I'm driving at, I said something earlier. Mighty works or, or, or all these physical things that you see, they are the work of grace and mercy. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean the person who you think, the physical person who you call or who says doing those works, it doesn't mean the person knows the Lord like you do. No, it doesn't mean. One may not know the Lord. Now, when I mean know the Lord, of course, he hears, he knows, he believes that there's Jesus. I'm talking to you about the knowledge of God, okay? And I said the knowledge of God is given by Jesus. It is Jesus that reveals the knowledge of God to you. So now, he's saying, I said that people, one can do mighty works without knowing Jesus. 
that intimate knowledge. That's what I'm talking about. And they may preach. They may tell you all kinds of things. Oh, I was praying the other day and, and I had a vision and the Lord was saying to me, yet, yet. Jesus said here, he says, I never knew you. I told you something from John chapter 10. Let's go there again. John chapter 10. Please follow this carefully. And I pray the Lord give you understanding. John chapter 10, he says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them. Now, these folks who did many mighty works, not everybody who does many mighty works, he wasn't talking to everybody. So don't start looking and say, Ah, see that man who's doing mighty works. Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't know Jesus. No, sir. No. He wasn't talking to all of them. There are men who do, who do mighty works and they are full of the knowledge of God. Yes, it's a personal thing. It's you and the Lord. Nobody can know God for you. Nobody can receive eternal life for you. I can't receive it on your behalf and I can't receive it to give it to you. Okay? <laughs> Praise God. So now he says, he says, I never knew you. But here he says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. Are you getting that now? Now, you must strike a balance in this thing. So why am I sharing this with you? So that you who's doing many mighty works, you don't get carried away thinking God is going to count all those your works and give you a special honor. No, sir. No. And you who feel, oh, I'm my own, I'm just teaching this small congregation the word of God. And you feel, oh, I've not gone near what God wants me to do. Who said that? According to Jesus, our reward for the work we do and the life we live has already been prepared before the foundation of the world. Yes. Our reward have been prepared before the foundation of the world. The only people that will not receive their reward are those who walk ignorantly or walk in foolishness. Yes. So even though God has prepared your reward from the foundation of the world, it doesn't mean you will receive it. And then it's not everybody you see that have a reward already. Not everyone. You know, a perfect example is Esau and Jacob. I always, I always like to stress that part because um, Esau and Jacob, they were born of the same womb. So naturally, you say, oh, they are godly seed, okay? The word of God came concerning the both of them from the womb. And God simply said, the elder one will serve the younger one. And there is nothing wrong with that statement. I've, I've said this many times. There's nothing wrong with that statement. It doesn't put Esau under Jacob, no. Actually, if you judge by the teachings of Jesus, okay, that statement which Jesus came to reveal the mind of the father, that statement was actually saying that, Esau will be greater than Jacob. Yes. Because all God said is the, the elder one will serve the younger one. And what did Jesus say? The greatest among you should serve. Okay. Now. But then you find Esau living a careless life. Now many things may have contributed to that. I mean, you know, sometimes when you read these things, try to, by the spirit of God, reason them out. I said, by the spirit of God reason it out, out okay and possibly because Rebecca their mother was a custodian of that word and possibly the way she understood it was the way she was carefully raising up uh, Jacob and then Isaac was raising up his son so you find a situation whereby Isaac was loved by uh, uh, Esau was loved by Isaac Jacob was loved by Rebecca and the same house now, these same things happen today. That's why I say in raising children, you must not have favorite, you must not have favorites. And you must not make the other children know that this is my favorite. Even though God has a purpose for them, it might affect how they believe in God's purpose. Now, I can imagine Esau grew up trying to prove himself. Yeah. Trying to prove himself. But now here's the point. He made wrong and terrible choices in life. And that affected, you know, oh no, God says, Esau, have I loved Jacob, have I um, hated? You need to ask yourself, when did God make that statement? He didn't make that statement from the beginning. Now look at, look at this. 
Esau, they were warned from Abraham that they should not marry from the daughters of Canaan. They were warned. And both of them received those warnings. And Esau did not hack into that warning. He went ahead and he married two wives. Now, and then the Bible said they were a torment to his parents. But you know, he said, eh, what will I do? What will I do? That's how careless Esau was. Now, Esau heard when Jacob was telling, when Isaac was telling Jacob, go, don't marry from this place. No, same you know, as God had told us. You know, go to your mother's brother's place. Go to Laban's house. Go and marry there. Now, Esau had the same instruction like Jacob heard. And Jacob went as he was instructed. Esau got up and instead of going to Pandorama, he went to Ishmael to marry one of Ishmael's daughters. Now, you see how his mind was working. He wasn't cursed. He just... Um, and the same thing, see? Now, guess what? In Laban's house, there were two daughters. There, were, there was Leah and there was Rachel. And historians believe that they were twins, just like Esau and Jacob. Yeah. Now, twins, but Leah came first and, and, and Rachel came next, just like Esau came first and Jacob came next. Now, imagine if Esau had obeyed when he heard his father instructing uh, uh, Jacob where to go to marry. If Esau had gone there, he would have found a wife in Leah. And funny enough, Jacob got there. He didn't like Leah. He loved Rachel. So his heart was already on, on, on Rachel, but then Leah was forced on him, probably because her husband did not come. Remember, he labored for this girl for seven years. So for seven years, Esau had the opportunity of changing his mind and coming to marry in the house where his father had his... He heard, not that it was hidden from him. So what am I saying? Our, our blessings, our inheritance have been provided from the foundation of the world. Yes, every one of us that are, that are born of God. Our blessings, our inheritance have been provided before the world began. It's been stamped, sealed, and kept for us. The only reason you will not receive your inheritance is because of your unbelief or your act of foolishness, just like Esau. So was there a, a wife kept for Esau that would have kept him in the mainstream of God's blessing? Yes. Oh, maybe God wanted. No, God could have used both of them. Oh, yes. God could have used both of them. Because because they are they are they are they I pray. My say my prayer for you is that you don't miss God in trying to be nothing. You don't miss God. That's my prayer for you. That that your eyes will be open to understand the ways of the Lord. Jesus said, I I I I come in. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. Now, Jacob had the father's instruction. Despite, now, imagine you're living in an environment. There were beautiful ladies around there. And now you're being sent to go to one far country to look for a wife that you don't even know exists in the first place. They didn't know. If they had known, Esau would have known that, okay, Laban has two daughters. In fact, you know, I always say, they are like, look, I wish Esau had decided to be wicked to, to, to Jacob at that point. Hey, you stole my battery. I'll steal your blessing. See, that house my father says I should go and marry. I'll run there first and marry the girl that is there. If there is any girl there, I'll marry her quickly. Maybe he should have even done that. So you see, God kept an inheritance for him. But he didn't go there. Left, Esau to, left Jacob to suffer the pain of marrying two wives and dealing with all that issues that came up with it. So, so face your front. Don't copy another person. Don't try to be like another person. The thing you must be concerned about, whether you're doing great works or whether you're doing little works in your own mind, is this. Am I hearing the voice of God? Number one. 
Number two, is he giving me eternal life? Am I giving entrance into the knowledge of God? Jesus said, this is life eternal. They might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou have sent. Now, when you know eternal life, you begin to do the will of the Father. Doing the will of the Father is not just holding crusades. Doing the will of the Father is living your life day by day according to his principles, according to his wisdom. Doing the will of the Father has to do with the decisions you make on a daily basis. What drives those decisions? Please understand what I'm sharing with you. Are those decisions being driven from the place of your knowledge and understanding of eternal life? Or are those decisions being driven from your carnal knowledge of life? Our time is up. I pray for you. May your eyes see these things. And may you run with them. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.